It started from high in the afternoon. The waves was high like you were in Hawaii. When you see these waves coming in, because we are right on the sea line. The morning when we got out, that they say, okay, it's safe now to come out. And I walk out, I almost drop. Containers turned upside down. It's containers that came from the harbor that was on our, up on the rocks by us. We had cars, four wheels just turned upside down. Because this hurricane, to me, it had tornado in it, it had earthquake, it had everything. All I was thinking is my home. That's all I could think. I want to go home, I want to go home. Known for its warmth, beauty and hospitality, the Caribbean attracts millions of visitors every year. However, these idyllic islands also face threats of earthquakes, landslides, hurricanes and other hazards which present a growing need for improved disaster management. We recognize that the islands of the Caribbean are vulnerable to a range of natural and man-made hazards, including earthquakes, floods, landslides, oil spills, tsunamis, and of course, hurricanes. As a result, the objective of the R3I is to empower the territories to reduce the impact of these expected hazards by enhancing their understanding of how they will affect communities, livelihoods, and development, by improving their planning processes, and by having better data, information, and communication systems. The Regional Risk Reduction Initiative is a EU-funded program which is being managed by UNDP in Barbados and it's meant for the British and Dutch OCTs, the Overseas Territories and Countries and it is meant to reduce risks where it pertains to uh, hurricanes, floods, tsunamis and any type of disaster that might happen to uh, any of the territories. Our involvement um, was mainly because we had some issues being a new agency and new to disaster management or new to comprehensive disaster management. There were some things that we needed to do that the project would have provided assistance for. The main project that we're doing here through the R3A is the uh, vulnerability assessment. Now, up until now, we have been focusing on hurricanes um, and the we know that we are vulnerable, but we just don't know how vulnerable we are. Um, so this project has given us the opportunity to, ex to explore that area and to develop um, those um, vulnerable areas that we have. I'm working on hazard and vulnerability map assessment. So basically we are working on the different hazards that can hit the different uh, small islands. So we are dealing with like Cayman, Grand Cayman, uh, the Aruba Island, uh, the Montserrat. And uh, so we are dealing with different hazards, that is the, the, the difficult issue. So we are dealing with a hurricane hazard, with a flooding hazard, with a, mm, a storm surge hazard, but also with a seismic hazard or volcanic hazard. So basically we are trying to figure out which kind of other are uh, interesting the different islands. So we are dealing with a very different and broad, uh, extensive, uh, different hazard in different islands. We have, we have on the island, we have some places that's uh, very uh, sensitive for disaster, like we have flooding areas. We have an oil refinery on the island. We are on tourist island, and a tourist island, that means a lot of planes, big planes is coming in, with ships is coming in, that if something happens, it's very um, sensitive for the, for the island, if something goes wrong. And that's why uh, we are doing our best with the UNDP, with the project, I try to prepare the people on the island in case of an emergency. We 
we have a different kind of risk on the island if you think about disaster. You have the natural disaster, you know, like hurricane, things like that, which can happen, flooding. Uh, we have had last year a very big unexpected uh, flooding. And on an island like this, you have a different kind. We have refinery, we have large ships with any every kind of product coming into the harbor. We have a very uh, narrow harbor. Uh, on both sides of the harbor, we have, uh, you have the, the downtown, let's say that. So if something happens there, we will have a big problem. So uh, all you can think about about danger and disaster uh, is possible on a small island. And when you are on a small island like this, you also have a small uh, um, capacity of people uh, to, help, uh, to help in case of an, a disaster. So one has a couple of um, problems. We have excavated in the hills significantly, which has created an erosion and hill slide um, problem for us. We have also built way too much and way too close on each other, which makes the dissipation of water in the ground extremely difficult and the flow off on the hills extremely fast. So we, we get uh, with maybe four inches, five inches of rain, we can already have a little river, river running down the roads. We have a specific community that lies between the beach and the pond and flooding is an issue in that community. Well, most of the communities that are next to the ponds, they are low-lying and we've had experiences before in 1999 Hurricane Lenny when the eastern area, sandy ground and the valley area flooded due to the amount of rainfall that we received. Hurricane Lenny was a traumatic experience for farmers, Department of Agriculture, etc. I remember the, the morning when um, my brother Lord lives in the valley area, called me early morning and said that he could not see the Department of Agriculture. The buildings were completely covered. I thought he was joking. Rushed to the valley area and realized that it was completely underwater, at least up to 15 feet of water. To reduce losses due to hazard impacts, it is critical to deliver information rapidly to the population and response agencies about imminent threats via early warning systems. I was brought on board with this project as the uh, CAF and Alerting Tools Specialist. I'm the expert in that field. I've been working with it since 2004. It's a very important international standard. As we know, disasters know no boundaries, and uh, alerts and warnings must be able to be transferred from uh, one uh, environment to another. So the R3I is a regional capability for supporting alert and warning, and that's uh, the part that I play. For instance, here in Anguilla, they started with a pilot several years ago and they've actually worked with their system quite a bit to be able to take the potential of a tsunami threat and be able to get that alert out to their public. We've had the Anguilla warning system in since 2008, working with only one server and one radio station. And the main challenge has been provision of funding. And through the R3A, we are going to be receiving funding to completely flesh out the system purchase additional sirens, and additional units to interrupt radio stations, and additional units to interrupt television stations, and basically just fully flesh out the angular warning system. R3I is developed mainly for the, the te technocrats, to put it that way. The projects helping the technocrats to do their work better, which means that the average citizen will notice that early warning systems will be put in place, so they this, the average citizen can be warned on time about uh, approaching hazards, what to do, what not to do. The mapping of vulnerable areas will help uh, town and country planners, for example, to identify which areas have a certain risk, which measures can be taken to avoid those, and in this way to protect the citizens that live there or are planning to live there. Before we start with Chapter 3, I almost forgot, I want to show you guys uh, a map of Curacao, which has many layers in it. All layers are turned on, but this map has definition queries, it has uh, layer groupings, it also has Well, the purpose of this workshop is to get the participants um, involved in working with the GIS software, because basically um, they use a lot of uh, mapping, which is in their everyday work, 
so they can know all the possibilities and all the functions and all the uh, benefits they can get from that desktop software. And what they benefit from is they learn all the new ways to use the information that they have to use it in a GIS software and through that GIS software they connect to the citizens of course giving them the information as timely as possible, as fast as possible and as dynamic as possible. I think it's a very valuable workshop because um, with the GIS you can display a lot of data that has um, spatial, a spatial component. Um, this type of data, especially for the Met Office, it's very important because we have like rain data and we have rain stations all over the islands and with this um, project we could display how much rain um, falls over the island. Well, because for example Curaçao is very prone to flooding, we've had several events of flooding. Um, last year we had Tomas and Last night we even had some flooding in certain areas. Um, with this project, um, those areas will be visible for us. And what the R3I project will bring for us is that um, the modeling, the hazard modeling, will indicate to us which areas are prone to flooding and how much rain has to fall before these areas get flooded. So for us at the Met Office, then this will make it easier for us to say, um, warn the people outside, because our mission is to protect the people from uh, natural disasters and that the disaster office can evacuate these people out. St. Martin we had data, but not accurate data. Now with the IGL project, it gave us good information, accurate data, so that we could know, especially where low-lying areas is, and um, so that we could um, uh, improve our response time and also involve the, the community at large with information and letting them know exactly where the, the low-lying areas is um, for their safety. It, it, it's nice to have a lot of data, but you need to make a transla translation to, uh, to information, from data to information. If I, for instance, tell you um, there's going to be seven inches of rain, the math department tells you that, uh, what you need to do is, okay, seven inches of rain, that's data. But what is the seven inches of rain going to do? It means that in this area, that area, and that area, you will flood in three minutes, and in other areas, you will flood in one minute, or other areas won't flood at all. That's information. So you have the gathering of data, and you have the translation into information, valuable information you can use to plan, because uh, data are gathered in real-time situations, but they're being used in prevention. Well, you'd say maybe how can you prepare for the unexpected? But you know there's many things that can happen that you don't know what is going to happen, but you know that you can train. So for anybody, any organization, training is never, you, you, you never train enough. Efficient response by emergency services and the community can reduce the loss of lives and property after a disaster. Urban search and rescue capacity, therefore, is one of the important needs in the territories that R3I is addressing. The, the whole idea is to empower and, you know, the, the community, the, the Caribbean community islands, where they can be more self-reliant and resourceful. Um, some countries are receiving early warning systems, some countries are receiving um, different tools, different uh, technology, software and stuff that they can use into their disaster management system. Some are receiving search and rescue. We're going to be doing the medical first responder. We've got the collapse uh, search and rescue, uh, the collapse structure uh, and uh, search techniques and consideration where we teach them how to uh, triage buildings. We also teach them how to build uh, shoring, how to make the building safe enough for them to effectively go in and do their, their search and their rescue. is all the parties, are, all the partners are working together in a structured and organized uh, platform and format. And everybody knows where they came from, uh, everybody knows where uh, collectively you want to go. You want to go to a better product. And what's a better product? Swift, uh, search and rescue operations, mitigation, those things. There is uh, uh, better structures, there's better information, there's m better methodology, better people, more skills, more training. So yes, 
And the answer is yes. We see a, an increase in the professionalism and all the partners in the search and rescue world, in the disaster relief world, have a part of the product. And what we all produce collectively is what you as a citizen would like to have. And that's some kind of assurance that when something happens, we, uh, we come to the rescue. I was the warden here at East End Primary School when my, my greatest experience was when I went past. I had 167 people here in the shelter. Uh, we did not, I did not know what, what to expect, but during the hurricane, the roof was being blown off. We had a lot of people crying. Uh, we did our best because people were coming in during the hurricane and everything. And we were blessed that we did not lose anyone during the hurricane in East End. long-term outlook has to be climate change is one of the major, major factors that are going to be impacting these islands. All of the associated um, occurrences that will happen, um, sea level rise, warmer climates, more frequent storms, drier or wetter environment, all of these remain you know, a major threats to the Cayman and something that the department is uh, gravely concerned about. An environment that is kind of adapted to hazards or available, that has some capacity to, to deal with any kind of environmental impacts is definitely one that the Cayman Islands um, would like to see. Mapping exercises provide baselines, they provide very important uh, tools for management when it comes to looking at the natural environment. ArcInfo and GIS are very important tools that we use. Historical data is, is loaded into those and it allows us to show through time how things are, are changing uh, as the climate changes. Um, they're also very important at times of uh, environmental disasters when we're able to either use the maps to uh, decide where best to utilize resources or to look at changes that have occurred as a result and things that we could do to intervene. The advantage of this project is that it forces cooperation between the Dutch and the UK overseas territories which was not really something we would think of in the past. So this project really uh, enforces those um, cooperation efforts, and I must say it really does work well. Before this project, uh, not many of us knew each other. But I had no idea um, of, or had any knowledge of anyone in the Dutch territories. And with attending meetings and trainings and um, other seminars, we have now come to a point where I think we're all comfortable with each other's systems. The best thing I have learned is that um, knowing other, other people in the Caribbean before that uh, project started, I didn't have any contact in the Caribbean. And the greatest is to get a lot, lot of uh, disaster managers, know them and know what are they doing and exchange of uh, work. I, I think our three, I, um has a good knowledge base that we should um, tap into more often. Um, we have a very funny way of doing things in the Caribbean that we don't use our brothers and sisters from the other islands that go through these same um, problems like us. Uh, other countries go through hurricanes, other countries have engineers. Um, it might not be the same as it is there here, but nevertheless I think um, a good engineer is a good engineer no matter where you put him in the world. The R3I project has already had a significant impact with those from the local communities of the islands seeing the benefits in very practical ways. We were um, collecting data at the vulnerable um, buildings. So there are about 200 um, buildings we are taking um, data collection. If something happens, we have all the data in the GIS system. I'm the principal of this school. The school's name is Rosario Collegium. Well, I think it's very important 
to include the schools because after all we are responsible for so many children and also for the teachers when something happens um, we know what we must do what we have to do and it gives you a sense of security much has been achieved but there is much more work to be done in order to effectively mitigate the ruinous effects of natural disasters to the lives and economies of these vulnerable countries. UNDP Barbados and OCS would wish to commend the European Commission for this important investment in disaster risk reduction in the countries that are benefiting in this project, specifically the overseas territories. This project is very important to the building of capacity in this area, in these countries. And one of the real tangible outcomes we have noticed is genuine collaboration through experience sharing and cooperation among the territories. Finally, UNDP sees this as a very important process in the sustainable development of the region, an area for which we are focused. Because disaster risk reduction is critical to sustaining the development gains that we've seen in the Caribbean.